Hey, this is Manny Moonraker, and this is a UFO report, so let's cue the music. Welcome to the 136th edition of the UFO Report. I'm Manny Moonraker. As you know, if you've been listening for a while, if you're just tuning in for the first time, boy, you're in for the ride of your life because this is not your mama and your dada's UFO Report. Actually, I don't do anything like your mama and your dada did. I don't do it like any other podcast, really. I'm totally me. Totally... Unusual in my ways. And yes, I curse like a sailor shit because this damn topic is bananas. And I'm talking about the topic of ufology. I'm talking about UFOs and aliens. It is absolutely crazy bananas and downright magnificent, really. Because you got to admit, not too many things are as fascinating and as controversial and as hush-hush as the topic of UFOs, aliens, getting probed, and things that are 4.2 far out of this world. For those of you who have been here before, welcome back. Like I said, I'm Manny Moolraker. This is number 136 of the UFO Report. And we're going to Argentina. Yeah, not. I mean, Argentina is not just for the Nazis. As you can tell by the podcast episode title, it's not just for the Nazis, because apparently UFOs love Argentina too. Heck, I like anywhere where you can get all the seasons, right? Like, I I, I mean, I once thought Argentina was too far south to get any snow, but if you look at the uh, image for this episode, you will see that there's some snow in the image. As a matter of fact... You'll see that there's an area that's not exactly completely covered in snow. And the reason being is that the report is that apparently that is a UFO uh, a UFO landing pad. That's right. That's where some of the UFO go to land their stuff and uh, visit the people of Argentina. Now, there's a, now, listen, this report, of course, is coming from the Express UK. And the reason why that is is because I'm doing some research on something I don't think I'll be able to get it out uh, in time for you guys, at least not for this week. But for those of you, I'm just getting a little bit sidetracked before we get into the the article. For those of you that uh, watch Netflix, for those of you that like watching these uh, Netflix-only documentary specials, whatever the hell you call them, series, there's one that's called Haunted. And I believe it's either episode 5 or episode 6 talks about Louisiana alien abductions. And when I tell you I just saw this just last night and it was fascinating. It was fascinating to me that uh, apparently I was in the area over the summer where a lot of these abductions occurred. Turns out that in the mid-1980s there was an abduction spree out in Bossier, Louisiana. And uh, I'm looking more into that because I, I guess Louisiana is a hotbed for UFOs and I had no idea. I had no idea that so many people have been experiencing UFOs in Louisiana. And it's been consistent since about, uh, I would say, the 40s or 50s. So I'm working on that. Hopefully, next week, I'll be able to find out more information. But I'm specifically looking for the subject, the individual that was the subject of this particular episode, because she herself said that she confirmed with other people that in the mid-1980s, there was some crazy-ass UFO abduction thing going on in Louisiana, especially around Bossier, and the townspeople knew about it. In fact, they were sharing stories with each other, which were all very similar. So no doubt, 
this is going to be one of those stories where we really are going to want to pay attention to what's going on. And like I said, go in there, go to Netflix, look it up, look at that episode. The other episodes are good so far. But those are more based on like the the ghostly uh, par- uh, poltergeist, uh, paranormal side of things. This one had to do with aliens. And I was quite shocked at what she said and what she discovered as she went through the process of trying to figure out what the heck was going on with her. So, more on that to come. And who knows, maybe I'll be lucky enough to contact the individual that the episode is about. Because apparently it was a true story. So, I guess we'll find out. The article in Express UK, UFO landing tracks, alien hunters stunned by discovery in Argentina snow. Basically what they're saying is that they uh, somebody found what looked to be a landing situation in Argentina in the snow and uh, they're they're going by this because apparently there is a shape in Argentina that's associated with UFOs. The name of the individual is a young man named Rodrigo. Rodrigo spotted a landing print in the snow by the village of uh, Mokahiu. And I'm sure I butchered that. On October 15th, there were two separate prints left in the snow. One of the, one of the prints looked similar to what uh, is known in Argentina as like the call sign for UFOs, which is a particular star. Rodrigo went to the local news and reported what he saw. And he says, and there's a quote here, that their size and perfection of the two items, the two landing spots, were almost strikingly perfect. He also said he was surprised that there were no footprints nearby. But he is, uh, he is pretty sure that the reason why this is is because people rarely go to this area. And maybe the UFOs had uh, participants or drivers or occupants that floated out of it. I don't know. He doesn't really go into that. But he says that it really does look like it's a, uh, a UFO landing pad. He actually took pictures of the landing pad that was shaped like a star. And like I said earlier... That uh, that episode picture you see was a picture that Rodrigo took when he was looking into the situation after discussing it with his family. He believes in E.T. and he does firmly believe that they are visiting the planet. And that's the extent of Rodrigo. Basically, he took some pictures, he put his beliefs forward, and uh, there you go. So the idea is that maybe people are building landing pads for UFOs. And the reason why we're saying that right now is because uh, the article adds a second story about a man in Argentina who actually received a message to uh, build what they call an OVNI port or a UFO port telepathically from aliens. Back on November 24, for 2008, an individual, uh, which goes by the name of Werner Jassil, who is actually a Swiss man that lives in Argentina, said that he was out with a friend, a friend named Louise. He mentioned to Louise, it's a UFO night. And before, he says, before he could finish the sentence, two luminous objects advanced about 200 meters above the river they were by. The objects were solid, circular, and like burnished uh, burnished metal. He says he has no idea why, but what happened next was that he received a mental telepathic message. The message asked Werner to build an airport. Some place where the UFOs could land. And so what's happening is that he's been building what they call little monuments that resemble stars, which many theorists in the, the uh, ufology world 
believe that these stars are somehow linked to extraterrestrial activity. So listen, I you know, this is it. This is what's happening uh, in uh, Argentina. So people are building what they call these OVNI pads or OVNI ports, because OVNI is UFO, basically in, uh, in Spanish in some countries. But anyway, they're building these ports because this is the shape that UFOs need to identify as a place where they can land. Highly irregular, some might say. But the question is, are they really receiving messages? Is Argentina now becoming a hotspot for UFO landing? So much that we need some kind of a, uh, a traffic controller situation, maybe schedule their landings in Argentina. Whatever it is, this is what's being reported. And you know what? I, I, to be honest, we have that here. There was a, not too long ago somebody in California uh, decked out their backyard as a UFO landing pad. So I'm not surprised. I mean, if you believe, you believe. And if you want to lend a helping hand to those who are 4.2 4 far and trying to come and uh, probe your neighbor, why not? Why not give them a nice place to land? Maybe offer some concessions, you know, like uh, some potato chips, some uh, hot chocolate, cocoa, uh, coffee, you know, a couple of snacks that they can get before they go mutilate some cattle. These are actual stories being reported by the Express UK. And like I said, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure, but I believe fully that these are not the only situations, and Argentina is not the only place where they're building landing spots for UFOs. If you want to read more about this story and these two individuals down in Argentina, the link is in the description. You can visit the Express UK and check out the story for yourself. There are more pictures that were taking, uh, being taken by these individuals to show uh, basically what's being built. As a matter of fact, Werner, his particular landing pad is quite intricate. Um, it almost looks like a crop circle in the sand. So take a look at that as that is also noted as a particular place for uh, landing UFOs in case you get abducted and you're abductor runs out of places to land, he can look for that symbol. Just give him the map, tell him go down to Argentina because Werner's got a spot for you. More to come on those abduction stories because those are fascinating. And, and really, listen, this, this story about the alien landing pads is fascinating too because, listen, I mean, you got to do your part and if helping... E.T. is it, then so be it. For the moment, I will not be building a UFO landing pad, but if you do, send me a picture. I'll go ahead and post it on ufobusterradio.com. And, since some of you don't like me saying this, just check the description for the uh, social media information and follow me there as well. It's a short episode, but like I said, I'm in the middle of hunting down some information about alien abductions. So don't go get probed before the next episode because I might have some information you might want to listen to. And if you've just been probed, you might not be receptive to the information. So with that said, aloha, farewell, goodbye, ciao.